Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, Tyler and, me, Amy. and Amy here tonight. Uh, we're going to, before we get into everything, going to give you an update. Where have we been? Amy, where have we been the last five weeks? Everywhere but home, it <laughs> feels like. We've been to Utah a lot. A lot of it. So, United by Bronco, then it was... Off-road games and Easter Jeep Safari. Uh, this last weekend, we just came from an awesome event that was close to home, an hour away. Um, any of you guys out there that have been to the Texas Off-Rodeo, that's kind of our favorite because, well... It's only Texas. an hour drive. It's an hour drive for us. Uh, we got to be there for the Eclipse event. It was awesome. Um, so first, I guess I'll say hi to everybody that's on tonight. Uh, Jose, uh, Santiago, Ron Jacobson, Dana. Hey, Dana. Uh, Dana's one of the newest members of the Bronc Buster team, so she's at home uh, supporting us. Robert Vic Vickers. Howie, Robert, how's it going? Um, and I'm going to mess up the last one. Pazuduco. Anyways, sorry about that. If you guys are on, say hi. Glad to have you here tonight. Uh, I'm excited about this one. I've been wanting to spill the beans on this for a while, but we wanted to have everything kind of in he place. He has the hardest time keeping a secret. I so. do not. Yes, he does. So anyways, we, uh, like I said, we've been on the road a lot, been to a lot of events, got a lot of uh, awesome content and testing uh, so much. I don't even know where to, where to start, but, uh, and yes, coming up this next weekend or this next week, we're going to be in Townsend. So we finally get a head east for a bit. Um, oh, Vince. Hey, Vince. Uh, anyway, so we're excited to be out at Super Celebration East. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Uh, we kind of toyed with the idea of showing up and, and uh, doing similar where we do installs and stuff. And Amy and I decided, you know what? We'd rather get out and do some trails with y'all and uh, not really focus on the booth. You guys, a lot of you that are meeting us there already know what we sell and what we do and, and uh, it'd be a lot more fun to get out on the trails and, and meet you. So uh, Thursday, next Thursday, we are going to be putting together a private Bronc Buster trail ride with our Bronco portal. And uh, because this topic tonight is about portals and, you know, we'd like to give anybody an opportunity that wants to come and check it out, learn more about it, ask questions, see it in action. Um, we'll be putting it out there on our social media and giving you an opportunity. We're trying to cap it at about 25 rigs so that we don't get just overwhelmed with too many. Um, but we'll be putting that out there again next Thursday. Um, Townsend, Tennessee, Super Celebration. East, uh, we'll be meeting up at, at the park and then or at um, there in Townsend and then heading out to the off road park. So, you want to join us? Hit me up on social media. We'll be putting out a, a sign up list so that we can kind of get a, a list to cap off. Yes, it'll be exciting to see what it's like to wheel over on that side. I of know, the you know, Amy and I, and that's part of why we made this decision is we've gone out there the last two years and we get stuck running a booth and which is great because we get to talk to a lot of people, but we don't get to really experience the East coast and the wheeling on the East coast. So we're excited to be able to get out there with some of you guys and uh, see your Broncos in action and let you ask questions and we can go over what the portals can do and what they're capable of. So you know, it's no secret. We've been now in the portal game for almost a year. This is one of those things that early on getting a Bronco, we were very, uh, well, I've been very interested in, you know, portals is not really a known thing by most people. And one thing that I've noticed a year ago, as opposed to now is a year ago, most people you talked to didn't know what portals were, didn't know much about them. Now, most of us understand what portals are. We all know it's a game changer. But we get the call, you know, question over and over again. Um, you know, how are you going to make this more affordable? Because that's that's the biggest restriction. You know, we already know that what a portal does, and and if you don't, we have some videos on our on our YouTube that goes into the explanation of portals. You know how they work. I'm going to just give a simple explanation. Maybe if you're new to our channel or just joining tonight. Uh, a portal axle, basically think of it as a gearbox that mounts on each, you know, behind each wheel where the hub assembly goes. It gives it five inches of lift um, on our portals and it gives it 22% gear reduction. 
And, you know, we've had those available. We've had uh, quite a large success of, of getting those out there on vehicles and showing the capabilities. Um, but at a price point of twenty-five thousand, we've we've been told that hey, we need we need options that give that capability to other people um, at a better price point. So, uh, you know, what brought us here? Well, it brought us here is you guys. You know, everybody's comments, everybody's you know feedback of what they'd like to see. So we've through a lot of R and D and and uh, investment in um, in what I believe is is really the future of the IFS vehicle, the Bronco. You know, we love the Bronco and, you know, how, you know, our goal from day one has always been, what can we do to make it more capable? You probably noticed that I'm not really into maybe some of the other things like, you know, lights are okay. And, and, uh, you know, some of the, this things that make it look cool are great, but I like to figure out how to make things more capable. So that's been my focus. And, uh, and sometimes I need to balance that out a little bit, <laughs> but with that, we are going to have, uh, by June, First um, will be our first small production run of 10 sets at uh, a $15,000 price point. It's going to be in the $15,000 range. We haven't released it on the website. We will uh, sometime this week, we're going to be sending out an announcement. We're just finalizing a few things, getting it on the website and get it live. But we are in production and it will be in that $15,000 range. And you might ask, okay, well, what are these and how are they different and how come the price is different? So we're still going to offer the uh, 7075 aluminum, you know, which is a billet, you know, carved out of uh, an alloy that is an aircraft grade material. It's, it's lighter weight. You know, that's what we've been producing. That's what we've been doing. Um, these new version will be a cast steel. Um, you know, any of you guys like the technical details, it's a GGG. Uh, five, oh, yeah. Anyways, it, it's basically a version of a cast steel. Uh, tensile strength is very similar to that of the aluminum. Um, so there's there's benefits and there's downsides, right? So let's talk about those. And and I'm hoping that you guys are joining us tonight and asking questions because it's not about me just sitting here talking. I really want to have this forum as a place where you guys can ask questions and I can answer it. And then everybody out there that's viewing can, can listen. So, uh, you know, I'm going to start throwing some stuff out there until we start seeing some questions and Justin will be in the background, popping those questions up and we can start answering more of them. So to get the ball rolling, Amy, can you think of some of the questions we get? I mean, we, we've been out there on a lot of events. In fact, here, I'm going to, I'm going to just pop up there. Um, some video in the background so you don't have to just look at my ugly face you might want to see amy's face but uh you guys might recognize that from social media that is our good friend sean and uh over there at talon's garage he does uh, all of our our skid plates and protection and he's awesome so when I talk about testing the portals, uh, I don't think anybody can doubt that these things have been put through the ringer and uh, not just myself. I'm just showing that, yeah, I can put them through a lot, but, but Sean's been good help in that too. Um, I think Grayson's got a pretty good question. Okay. What is it? He says it's little sister getting a set. Little sister is getting a set. So little sister will be getting the first set of this new design. Um, will be, probably shipping yeah they'll be probably ready for a little sister in about two weeks so ahead of everybody else's we'll be putting them on there just you know we've done some design changes and we're going to get into that what all we've we've done on the changes and and how we're making them different um not a lot of changes but uh, that that is coming then ron jacobson so this is the <laughs> usa bronc buster design you teased and it's it isn't made by Tigus. So this is not, this will not be the USA designed one yet. Um, we're still working on that with, with Austin. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, this is not with Tigus either. This is our own uh, version that we will be manufacturing overseas. Uh, because as of right now, that's the biggest thing I heard over and over is we want something that's affordable. And it's going to take some time before we get the affordable version that we can make here. So uh, 
it, it is coming. The, you know, we'll make advances and changes and, and different things over time. But right now, this version uh, we'll be making overseas and we'll be making that available at a price point of 15000 Now, uh, part of that discussion, oh, let's see. Okay, so with that, uh, we wanna talk about, okay, you know, we get out, we're going to all these events and what have we learned? So, you know, we're out there at uh, Matt's Off-Road. This is one of the, one of the things that, that we were going to over the last two weeks. And we met and talked with a lot of people. Now, most of these people aren't Bronco people. They're, you know, all walks of life, Jeep and Toyota. And, and uh, on this day specifically, we were asked by Matt's Off-Road to carry a set of speakers on top of the Bronco um, up through the trail. We were doing triple seven or double, yeah, triple seven to double Sammy. Okay. Now it's a level seven, eight rated, you know, there's some, some good stuff in between. And the, the neat thing is, is that if you're not familiar with our, uh, with our vehicle portal, uh, this actually right here is in Moab two weeks ago. Um, this is my 16 year old daughter driving. This is on Canes Creek coming up. If you guys are familiar with Hamburger Hill, she's coming up Hamburger Hill. And, and one of the things I like to point out is, number one, you can really see the clearance in this shot. It, it highlights the, uh, the high clearance that we have. Um, now, my daughter is incredibly, a, a incredibly capable driver, and, but she's 16 years old. I mean, she's new at this. But it, it really is awesome to see the capabilities that it gives everybody um, with that gear reduction, 22% gear reduction and the, the clearance, um, which leads me to some of the other advantages to what, uh, what portals are and, and why they're important. I believe they're important to, to the discussion is, you know, we, we have these expensive investments, right? 40, 50, 60, sometimes $70,000 and Yes, I agree. Sixteen-year-old Reagan. Reagan is awesome for sure. You need to turn your comments back on. Oh, You're yeah. Lots of well, I'm, Justin's <laughs> pulling the comments up. So, anyways, question from Instagram: What other changes do you need with the portals? New upper control arms, coilovers. Very good question. So, on portal, I'll just go back to that uh, that video that we were showing you real quick, so you can kind of see it while we're talking about it. And this is nothing more than a, basically a stock Bronco. We took a non-Sasquatch bad, or not Badlands, non-Sasquatch black diamond that had 446 and no front lockers. We kept the stock, stock suspension. Um, and only thing we did is we upgraded the front drive unit to basically a Sasquatch front drive unit and, uh, and put in, we put portals on it. So having lockers, front drive unit, and that's it. So the, the upper control arm does not need to be replaced. In fact, I'm still, I'm still trying to break mine on Bronk Buster. Of all things that I have not been able to break yet, my upper control arms are still hanging in there. Uh, and as far as the coilover, if you want more, uh, more travel or if you want more you know, better ride quality, then yes, an upgraded coilover is, is recommended, but it's not needed. You know, we've gone cross country, California, New Mexico, I mean, all over the country in, in this vehicle, driving it and then doing the trails and driving it and doing the trails. And, you know, could there be a better ride than the stock suspension? Sure. If I had to choose in my budget, what would I choose first? I would choose to have the, um, the portals over a suspension. It, it replaces the need for a suspension because most of us are putting a lift on it to fit bigger tires. Uh, unless you're talking about going out Baja, which again, that's a different kind of build. And, and you know, I think if you're the one that wants to do the jumping and the, the fast off-road, then, you know, Baja kit makes an incredible kit and you're, you're doing really nice coilovers and, you're, you know, long travel and all of that stuff. So anyways, hopefully that answers your question. Now to uh, Lifted Bronco, Frank, how's it going, buddy? Uh, helical or straight cut gears? These are still helical. So they're the exact same internals of what, well, pretty much the exact same internals of what we've been running. The only difference is the housings themselves, instead of being out of cast aluminum, or not cast, instead of them being out of 7075 aluminum, which is a very expensive material and takes a lot of machining, we're now doing it out of a cast steel, which brings that cost down a lot. 
now that brings me to a good a good question I want to ask you guys out there. So we already told you we're going to be in that fifteen thousand dollar range for a set of portals that give you helical cut gears, um, which is the better. So this is this is in the better category. The best is going to be the aluminum um, seventy seventy five, and we'll talk about some of those reasons why. But uh, you know we we want to talk about okay, do you guys want another option? Because it, it would be very easily not very easy, but we could provide an option that's maybe a couple thousand dollars less that is doesn't have any of the bells and whistles. It doesn't have any of the central tire air inflation capabilities, that it's a four gear straight cut gear, which is very simple um, and inexpensive, a lot less expensive to make that would even get that cost down more. Now, here's the downside. Let, let's talk about each level, right? So you, if we start, let's just say we get down to about 13,000 for a set that with straight cut gears, four gear system, um, it would be out of a 6061 aluminum, which is another aluminum alloy, not as strong as 7075 because it wouldn't be needed. I won't go into that unless somebody has a question there, but that one would be, you know, a lot louder on the highway. Um, you're going to hear the gear noise because there's no way to completely eliminate that gear noise. And the longevity of those gears aren't going to be as long. But it's a price point that gets you to something a lot more affordable. Um, that one will be not quite as much height with the four gear system. We'd be probably somewhere in the four inch range. Uh, then we, we go to the ones we're talking about releasing right now, which are the cast steel has a good tensile strength. It's going to, uh, um, it's going to be heavier. So uh, the downside from the aluminum version is steel is heavier. So it's probably going to add about 30 pounds per corner. So over, you know, over the entire vehicle, about 120 pounds. So you're adding a considerable amount of weight. Um, one of the things we did in this in this redesign is we added some wall thickness, we added some more clamp force, we added some uh, different gasket to make it more serviceable. We changed up how it vents to make that easier to operate and service. Um, so that is a better version. And the best version would be the 7075 aluminum. And we're working on bringing that cost down some too. So hopefully in the next little bit, we'll have a version, you know, the, the new version of the aluminum that will be less than 25,000. Uh, but the advantages there are a lot less weight. It dissipates heat better, um, which heat's not been a real problem with these. You know, they, they run about the same temperature as your rear differential does. So not a huge issue, but aluminum will dissipate the heat more. And uh, <clears throat> the, uh, um, oh yes, the wear. So longevity, Steel is going to be, um, you know, more susceptible to rust. You know, if you live in a northern climate that, you know, they will be protected, but, you know, you have a lot of steel par par or parts on your Bronco as well. So it may not be a big issue, but that is something that some people brought up to me as well. I'd rather pay for the billet aluminum than go to a cast steel. So that's why we want to have options, right? Different product price points, different options, different pros and cons. Uh, where these are made, these are made in China. Um, again, you know, we're going to have other versions, but uh, trying to listen to the community and bringing the value that that we want to bring. Um, you know, everybody has repeatedly said we need something that is in that affordable price range. This is what gets us there right now. And while we work on other options, for sure. So let's see um, the track width. So James, it, it widens the track width about seven inches overall. Um, on the vehicle, you know, this one right here that, uh, that I'll, I'll just kind of show that video again because you can see the stance coming up. That has the non-Sasquatch flares on it. Um, and that is a stock Sasquatch wheel. So that would be, if, if you ran a positive 30 millimeter stock Sasquatch wheel, that would be your stance. You know, if we were to upgrade the, the fender flares to the wider Sasquatch flares, then that would cover more of that. Um, but it does add about seven inch overall to the width if you run stock Sasquatch wheels. Now, if you're um, wanting an, a, the capability to bring that track width back in more, then we carry a, a central tire air inflation capable wheel that is also a positive um positive 55 millimeters. So it, it brings it in 
a little bit more than 20 millimeters on each side. So you're gonna you're gonna be bringing that in a few inches if that's a concern. Um, most of the time we you know we found that we like that extra width. A couple of times we get a little squoze in some areas, especially on the pickle out in Moab, but never never been a problem to get through anything. Um, Megan, no problem. If I answered it, I'll answer it again. So the portals, uh, what clearance does the portals provide without upgrading coilovers? Five inches. So this version gives you five inches with no coilover. And if you're using just to keep in your stock tires. Now, of course, if you go from, you know, a 35 inch, which isn't really 35, they're like 34 and you go to a true 37, well, then you're going to, you know, add another inch, inch and a half, um, onto your overall clearance as well. So in the case of, of the Bronco that I'm showing in this example, and the one that we're going to be taking out to Tennessee, that one, you know, you, from stock, you're about six and a half inches more clearance than you would on a, on a stock Bronco, if that answers the question. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look at my notes here. Any more questions? Keep them coming. Uh, some other I talked about how we're going to be, you know, changing up how they vent to make it more serviceable, um, easier to service. Um, well, okay, I know one. Impact on my okay, impact on miles per gallon. So what we're getting cross country on on the vehicle that uh, that I've been showing you that we drive, you know, we just drove it back from Moab. Um, I believe Alex Alex drove it. I think he was averaging about 17 miles per gallon. 16 to 17. I have to get back to you. I don't want to tell you if he's no, on here. Alex, hopefully Alex, Alex is, is on. on so Alex, tell me for sure what it was, if I was wrong or not. Um, okay. So another, another thing that I get asked, okay. Yes. What about the weak Ford knuckle? So we'll have an option for that. Not right now. I don't, my personal opinion, I'm not going to sell something to somebody I don't think is necessary. Um, and I, I know that, you know, some people feel like it's weak. You know, it it took literally me jumping my Bronco with 43 inch stickies, tucking it into a dune, having another part fail, which, you know, if, if any of you saw or know, you know, know what, been following what happened, I had the bottom of my shock mount fail, the shock came out, everything compressed up with 43 inch tires at 45 miles an hour before it broke my upper knuckle. And I mean, this is including, I rolled it off of Pritchett Canyon 30 feet down, landed on, on the tires, um, broke the shock mount then. And that's part of what led to the second failure because I didn't fix it all together. So, so that's my fault. But, you know, we've had a lot of customers say, hey, we want an option um, for a knuckle. So we're working on a billet knuckle as an option. This will be one of those kind of pick your cart what you want. Um, if you want it, it will be available. But we learned a lot through that. We learned, you know, where the failures were when that when that did fail, I mean it it crunched in, it collapsed, it broke CV axle, you know the 32 spline, it broke a lot of stuff, but it didn't do a thing to the portal. Um, so, anyways, that's my assessment is not really needed. And uh, Fabian, yes, we will have a firm. That is a very serious question. Very serious question, <laughs> and uh, it will actually be uh for one week so the week that we release the the first 10 sets the first 10 orders it will be available at zero percent as well so definitely if this is something you're looking at please 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 be keeping tabs get on there get the first 10 uh, and the only reason i'm doing 10 right now is i want to kind of gauge um what the demand is and then we'll we'll you know we can scale up and, and go into a lot more production but the first 10 that will be available on June 1st um, will have that 0% interest as well. Um, so no, it will not. I don't think any of our Broncos fit inside the trailers of a, oh. of a standard car trailer. Oh. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'd have to go measure for sure. Alan, I... If somebody, if somebody out there knows what the stock Alan, width, you managed to stomp them. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Everybody out there that's an expert on the Bronco, what is the stock width? I can Google it real quick, but then I'd lose my focus of a Bronco. Add seven inches to that. And if that fits within 85, I guess I haven't tried it on a car trailer, but I don't think so. In the back of my mind, I'm saying, you know, gauging the width and stuff. No, I don't think it would. Um, 
Um, somebody had a question about gear reduction. Okay, yes, right here. I saw James. James. Ilya? No, James, actually, no. There, guys, listen, there's no stupid questions. Honestly, sometimes in my head, I think all these things are just, I know it. And uh, I encourage you, if you have a question, ask it, right? There is no such thing as stupid. So gear reduction on the road. Um, I, I've, gone, I've gotten my Bronco up to over 100 miles an hour. Now, don't tell any cops out there and come find me. But and and was I outside of that torque curve? No. Um, you know, that's with 37 inch tires. But also keep in mind that as soon as I did the gear reduction, I went in a bigger tire. So my Bronco came stock with 33s. I went up to a 37 and my speedometer without any calibration is actually within one mile per hour. So my torque curve is, is just about perfect. Um, if you were to go 40s, you can go 40s. I've got 40s on on our you know one of the other Broncos, actually 43s, and it's going to definitely that impacts your fuel mileage a lot. In my opinion, the perfect combination: five inches of lift with the portal, 37 inch tires. That is like that sweet spot where you get the most um, capabilities because you have the clearance you need, and you have the smaller wheel size actually works in your advantage. I mean, Bronc Buster is a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see a whole lot of people going out wanting to put 43s on their Bronco and make it a, a trail rig. So, you know, 37s is a great one. But as far as what that gear reduction does for the road, it, it, it runs beautifully. Again, not a dumb question, but maybe to kind of elaborate on that further, I get this question a lot. How is it for, for noise? You can't hear anything on the, on the portals. They're absolutely quiet. And now that I'm running the Armadillo hardtop, I can hear a lot more and I can still tell you there is no, no noise on these gears. Now, the third version of, of, of portals we're talking about, that would be a straight cut gear. Those will be, be that slowest price point, the least expensive components, but would have more, not as good of road manners, I guess. You know, it'd be more for your, eh, not so much my daily, it's more my play rig and I'm gonna daily it a little bit would be my best way to explain that, right? Um. Eric lost the house since he can't get his in the garage anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can still fit Bronc Buster in the garage, actually. It's well, actually out in my garage built, right now. But I built garage my garage store. custom because I like being able to fit my truck or whatever in there. And so I have a full, I guess, eight foot. Yeah, full eight foot door. So I can barely, like barely squeeze in there, but it fits. So I think it's time for a remodel. Um, all right. So your Ferrari 75 inches wide and it barely fits in a standard and closed car trailer. So yeah, I would, I would and say it's not going to. For Alex sure. says portal truck. Yeah. And portal is 91 inches. So Alex, thank you. He went and gave me that, uh, that a measurement. So, um, so Mark has a zero offset wheel with one and a half spacers. So it doesn't fit between the fenders on his trailer. No. I, and really let's see zero offset. So you're 60 millimeters plus um, inch and a half, inch and a half, three inches, you know, really at a zero offset with an inch and a half wheel spacer, you're almost the tra same track width as what we are with the portals. Almost not quite. Don't give Connie any ideas. <laughs> hey, you know, Connie, got, Connie gave you portals. Now you need you to need give to her a, a nice bigger garage. garage. Oh, I'm just, I'm just saying. So, um, If, whoops, sorry, I hit that. Um, how do they add three and a half inches of side? Three and three quarters, so almost four inches. Um, track width of 91. Well, I mean, that is that is what they add. So I'd, I'd have to go back and see what, you know, what the stock Bronco is. I don't think anybody said exactly all. Uh, you haven't really had anybody say exactly what the stock width of it is, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Ideal is 102 wide driver over fender trailer. So yeah, having a, a drive over fender becomes a necessity if you're gonna be trailering these a lot. Um, get you a crawler hauler. We love our crawler hauler. It, it fits perfectly up on that. Um, ignoring the CTI stuff, any other reason other wheels with large enough positive offset wouldn't work to keep width in check. No, I, I just, I haven't been able, James, to find any other wheels out there that go to that much of a positive offset, except for, I will tell you, a little hack that uh, that my buddy, this guy here. So the wheels that he's running, actually, 
uh, Sean is running a positive 55, I think, millimeter or 50 millimeter. Um, don't quote me on that. I know it's wider than it's it definitely not wider. It, it brings it into a better stance than the Sasquatch wheels. And I believe those come off of a non Sasquatch Badlands is what he told me. Anyways, they're they're available out there in the market. People are upgrading and uh, there are some options that get you close without having to buy all different wheels. But th the advantage is, is that I personally, I think the stock Sasquatch wheels um, work very well. But if you are wanting to bring that in more, there are we do have options for you. So, yeah, you're right. Positive 55. Actually, it's positive 60 millimeters on our CTIS wheels. Positive 55 is these that you can get that Ford has. Um, so, yes, they'll fit 37s without any other mods. The Bronco that you see, you know, that I've been showing there in the video is nothing more than portals. Um, the other mods I've done is, is just basically I took what was more available is a non-Sasquatch Bronco made it a Sasquatch other than I didn't upgrade the suspension. So it actually has less suspension height than your Bilstein's would on a Sasquatch Bronco. But this would give you an instance where all you need even on a non-Sasquatch Bronco is the portals um, for the five inch lift and 37s. And I, I don't rub on anything. So um, you can go bigger. I was running for a little while there, a th 38 inch, uh, 38 inch uh, tire. Um, a little bit of rubbing at that point. So there are options to get it up a little bit higher. And that's where you'd talk about doing um, maybe a, a small coil over lift. I'm not against doing a coil over lift. The thing is, guys, if you can do anything to your Bronco to get your clearance without changing the geometry of your CV axles, that is ideal. Which brings me to another question. So I think somebody was asking about whether or not we were going to, we were talking about an East trip. Um, Sorry, there was a lot popping up there. So, Justin, if you see the one back there that they were talking about. And, yes, what we're talking about is we're going to be in Tennessee next week for Super Celebration East. So if any of you guys back east and you're planning on coming to Super Celebration East, we'll be posting up on our social media, putting a list together of anybody that wants to come out, join our trail. And, uh, you know, I might even let you drive portal a little bit, too. But I, I got to see how you drive first. <laughs> so anyways, if you, that, that's where you can see it in action on the East Coast. Um, from there, we'll be kind of bouncing all over the place to different events for the rest of the year as well. Uh, we try and, I mean, really, literally, it's it's hardly ever home because we're, we've are we been event to event to event and getting it out there and showing people and, and what the capabilities are. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. So... Um, I'm going to look at my notes to see if there's something else that I saw that I missed, maybe. Uh, so, yes, I know. Oh, here we go. From IG, Tim. Um, are you ever getting a Bronco Raptor? Uh, I, I want to stay married, Tim. I've got, I've got four Broncos, and we've been quite busy with those. So here's the deal. I think the Raptor is just about as good as it needs to get when you buy just a Raptor. However, I, I kind of like having the, the Bronco on the portal. So uh, anyways, we've had a lot of people want wanting portals on, on Raptor. It is coming. We are working on it. It's just one project at a time. And it's been important that we get this out at this price point. Then we work on Raptor. Uh, but I don't, yeah, I want a Raptor, but I don't see it in my near future. I got too much going on with the other. And it's going to have to sell a couple. Yeah, I got I to gotta get rid of some, my wife says, and I kind of like all the Broncos we have right now. We've got a little two-door that we we still need to have some fun with. So yeah. that's that's Amy's daily right now. So nice. we call it Little Homie. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Watch yeah. Those trees. I mean, the last... Uh, what is it? Saturday, you know, Sunday, Monday, you know, so the last two days we've been out at the off rodeo in Texas and they've been taking us through all those tight trees. Cause most of the time we're out in the rocks. I agree. Um, the nice thing about having the width of the tire is it's a really good gauge to keep your body off of the trees. So I'd rather rub my tire up against a tree before I hit my body up against a tree. And I've never been in anything too tight that I can't fit in yet that I've had to back out. of. Now, is it there? Sure. Um, are we going to find some when we go to Windrock? I guess we'll see. I don't know. Haven't haven't done Windrock yet. Um, so the the uh, Castile are the same gear reduction. 
Uh, there are no other gear ratios coming at this time. Again, it's, it all comes down to how do we keep the price down? If I offer multiple gear ratios, multiple different gears, it, it changes how we can price it. So will we do it in the future? Yes, um, but it, we've got to get to a point where the demand calls for it. And a 22% gear reduction is, in my opinion, about the perfect gear reduction. The only way you'd really want to go less than that is if you were going to keep 35 inch tires. But if you keep 35 inch tires with five inch portals, it kind of looks like uh, this guy right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm picking on. Hey so it it looks kind of like uh, the Bronco lips get, uh, skipped leg day. So he's still on 35s. <laughs> and I tease him all the time about it. Um, and so for 37s to 40 inch, you know, especially if you already got 4.7 gear ratio, that's that perfect range. And so I, I've got it. We've got to get to a point where there's enough demand to justify it. Otherwise, I can't keep that price down. So I'm I'm listening to what is the most important to the Bronco community. And over and over and over again, it's price, price, price. Everybody wants an option that's price. So. Dates for Wheeling for a Cause, Mark, I I know, I promised you. <laughs> and here I'm wearing my Wheeling for a Cause shirt tonight. Uh, we're still, we're still, work, we're working through a few logistical things right now. So it's probably going to be that October 9th, uh, I believe, you know, in that area. I promise you in the next week, okay? Next week, I will, I will get you that answer um, so that everybody can start planning. So my apologies. Um, we'll get that, get that to you right away. We're just working through a few logistics. All right, uh, I'm gonna go back to comments here. What else we got? Uh... <laughs> no, I like little sister. I like the way she is. I wouldn't mind some portals though. Amy wants to jump, little homie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cute, Fabian. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably, right? Um, Yes, Sean finally put some running boards on. Yeah, we're teasing him because he was doing all these uh, all these hardcore off-roading with his steps that were getting banged up and slammed in the side of his Bronco. And and uh, that's actually a project that Sean's working on is, is uh, some really nice uh, tubular uh, running board, uh, rock sliders, geez. Some really nice rock slides that he's going to be offering here soon. So he's, he's playing with a few variations, just picked up a, a tube bender. So we'll... We'll see how that progresses and start sharing that with you guys here soon too. So um, let's see. Yes, we will see you there. We're excited. You know, this is uh, honestly, okay. If this has been the battle back and forth with Amy and I, we just got back from being gone five weeks. It's not a battle between you and I. It's a it's battle in, going on in your head. It's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's in my head. In fact, I heard a joke the other day, and I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh at myself, and because it's perfectly described me. If, if anybody's ever been to Bucky's on a on a holiday weekend with five thousand people in there going twenty different directions, that's the inside of my head sometimes, <laughs> and and I tell her that so she can kind of just go easy on me. But uh, no, it's uh, it, it's been an inner battle because we're on the road, we're on the road, we try and balance family, we've got to come home, get a lot of stuff caught up for you know, so we can get product out. And, and uh, you know, luckily we've got Dana. Dana's on here tonight here that's running the office and doing fulfillment, and answering your guys' emails. So uh, it's been a huge help having her. And we brought on another guy, um, Alex. Alex is on listening tonight as well. Alex has been a huge help in helping us go to the events. Uh, he'll be coming out with us to Tennessee. You guys will get to meet us, but we can't wait. Tennessee's fun and first time getting to wheel at Windrock. So that'll even be better, right? Um. All right, this one may be out there, but would you consider portal front and diff gear change to match in rear? Um, portal front and diff gear change to match in rear. I'm not, so I apologize, Alan. I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand the question. So let me just, let me, maybe I'm gonna be saying something you already know. Uh, of course, if you're at 446 gears and then we do a 22% gear reduction, it's, you know, four, four, six times 22, anyway, 0.22, it's going to put it at that gear ratio. Um, so I'm not, yeah, the, the, the front and the rear, cause we're putting portals on the front and the rear. So that, that gear ratio changes both front and rear, it matches. So whatever that Bronco was, if it was a four, seven, 
then it's going to change it to, I think it's about a five, 540 or 550 gear ratio on a 47. So it, it does match front and back does match. If that answers your question, if not, you know, let me know and we're, we're glad to answer another one. Um, <laughs> hi, Kalani. <laughs> Nothing. We're not, we're not selling anything to Eric. I promise. Other than we're Trying told to get you an upgrade on your garage. We told him you need a new, new garage, a bigger garage. So, and yes, uh, Oh, whoops. What was that other? Sorry. I jumped over somebody's there. 446. Yes. 446 front with, uh, with portal may 538 gear. Yeah. Rear deal. Um, no front portal, maybe 538 rear. So yeah, you can re gear the rear or the front to whatever you want. And then with the gear reduction. So the portal is going to stay at the 22% and it just depends on what you have in there is what that's going to end up if that's answering. Correct. So yeah, so on on uh, five on four point four six gears, it's going to put you at about a five forty four, so it puts you in a good a good ratio. Um, no, the, we do have though. So the portals are four. When we talk about a, a set of portals for fifteen thousand dollars, that's four corners. That's all four, you know, front and back. That so that actually that's a good question. Something I totally forgot to bring up. What all does that include? That includes the portal. That includes the brake lines that will extend, you know, out your brake lines front and rear. That extend that that includes new um, axle shafts in the rear, 4340 hardened steel axle shafts because that's part of the bolt-on process. It it converts your. Uh, I don't want to get too technical, but you know, basically, if you know what a semi-float axle is, our Broncos are a semi-float, meaning that. You know the way that it rides in there on the the bearing, it's it's semi floating, and it's not going to last as long. What's so that? Someone's saying that his. Well, let me let me finish this real quick. So, and I'll go to that. Sorry. So with that, the uh, the um, it'll convert it to a full float axle and put in this new axle shaft. So that's all included in that. Go ahead. Somebody was just clarifying his question. What he's asking is, can he run front portal only? Oh. Um. Yeah, you're you're going to have a hard time. You're going to want to match up that rear just as close as you can, or you're going to be tearing through tires and you're going to be causing damage because if one's turning as fast as the other, it, it's definitely possible. It's not anything that we're looking at doing in the near, the real near future, but I'm, I'm willing to look at it. Um, we'd have to figure out, okay, if, if you're running four seven, uh, gears and you put on the portals, then what would you have to put in the rear? that that would go back to one of those instances where we would have to probably redesign and do a different gear set that uh, would would bring that to a lower gear set so yes it's possible um sign up for the trail ride ben stay on our social media so justin's in the background he runs all of this we're going to actually uh um, put it out there for a sign up here in the next couple of days um on I don't know, Justin, do you want to jump in and help me just for one minute here on what, how the best way to handle that? And I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here. Anyway, he's working on it. Okay. He's working on it. We'll get back with you and we'll put it out there. We'll send out, I mean, if you're not subscribed to our email list, we'll send it out by email list. Uh, we'll put it on Instagram and, and Facebook. Probably do like a sign up genie. I I'd love to have more than 25, but it's, uh, it's one of those things that, to keep it fun and safe, I'd rather keep it a small group. Um, if we do get a whole bunch that, hey, let's let's go out, I wanna see the capabilities, then I'll see about maybe another day that week. Um, we will be going out on some of the other trails depending on the weather, uh, but I'm told that the, the trails they'll be running there for Super Celebration is weather dependent, and if it rains, they'll shut those down. So that's why I really wanted to go out to uh, um, to do a trail ride myself and, and uh, anybody wants to come. So, um, we got somebody here from Bleep and Jeep. He saw us on Bleep and Jeep. Oh, cool. Awesome. Well, have, glad to have you. Uh, we love Bleep and Jeep. Matt uh, Matt and Josh are awesome guys. And uh, um, we we love hanging out with those guys. We got to spend several days out in San Hollow. We were going to go do a Bronco versus Jeep again on uh, Pritchett Canyon, but their schedule didn't allow and they had some mechanical issues and had to get back home. 
And uh, but yes, bleep and jeep, awesome guys. Um, yes, first run of 10 units, ETA for a second run. And uh, that second run will probably be about six to eight weeks behind the first run. Um, it's it's not going to be a long, long period of time. And it's it, it's more just kind of gauging how sales go. Um, but I, I anticipate that there won't be a huge gap between the two. <laughs> Josh. Josh, all right. You're Thank you. Buddy. Trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Angie doesn't like me, I'm sure, right? <laughs> uh, Sin City Sharky, how's it going, buddy? Um, and it'll work on an M110, absolutely, 100%. Um, it, it mounts up to the same, same, uh, all the same components on the outside, the hub, you know, the, the hubs get pulled out, the, the wheel bearing, uh, wheel hub assembly gets pulled out, and your CV axle goes in and bolts in, no problem. Yeah, I, I knew what you meant. M190, I wasn't going to correct you, buddy. <laughs> uh, what else? All right. Have I missed anything on my list? Uh, Let's see. Josh is saying Angie does love you just as long as you're supervised. Well, <laughs> Amy's my supervisor, but she fails at that sometimes. All right. Oh, East Coast. Sorry, there was another one about something about East Coast. What was that? Um, 10 hours for me, but would be cool to see. Might take a drive. James, love to see you. Love to meet you. And uh, if you can come out, definitely let us know for sure. Um, Ron's asking. Ron. Oh, yeah, Tom. Oh, subscribe from West Virginia. Well, come on out to <laughs> Supercell. Come see us, buddy. You're not that far, right? Uh, improvements, can you elaborate? Yes. Um, small things. Just, you know, things about that make it more serviceable, make it easier for install. Um, things that, you know, I just wanted to beef up a little bit, uh, the venting, you know, we, we found that the way we had the venting location on the first, first sets would sometimes, um, uh, create a little bit of a pump and want to pump some, some oil out. And so we've moved that location. We've eliminated with that. We've already tested this out, um, on several of our portals and it very successful, it eliminates the need for that additional canister, which is one less thing to have to install, one less thing to have to buy and helps bring that cost down. So it's it's just little things like that. We've added thickness to the wall so we could put a gasket on there, which just makes it easier to, you know, for pulling apart, putting back together. Um, most of it's just serviceability. I've, I've now, Amy and I, the two of us have installed ourselves, what, at least 15 sets, I think. I, I've lost count. And... So as the person installing over and over and over and over again, you know, we, okay, what would we do different? How would we make it easier? How would we make it more for the end user? That's, that's the nice thing about us being so hands-on with it is we, my, our whole goal is, is not just listening to what the community wants, but also anticipating what they might want based on future needs. Right. Um, bird dog. Well, yeah, we're keeping a firm in business, right? <laughs> and we always appreciate you, buddy, and, and your support. Bird Dog's been uh, been one of our first customers, I think, almost day one, and and uh, good friend. We look forward to seeing you out there in Tennessee. So, right, you did say you're coming to Tennessee. I hope. Anyways, if not, you better be. Yeah. Um, renderings. So I don't, uh, I can put some up here soon. You're not going to see much difference in the way they look. They look almost identical. Everything that we've changed is is just minute, small differences. Um, uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, we. Uh, what else we got? This damage protecting this one. Okay. Well, any other questions that we might have? Think we might have answered them all and, and appreciate all the participation. This has been great. 50 minutes of uh, answering questions and keeping us on the, keeping us running here. So <laughs> by all means, guys, uh, shoot them out there on, on social media if you have them or, or email info at uh, bronkbustertx.com. And uh, we'd love to answer any more questions you have. Look forward to seeing you guys out in Tennessee. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.
yes, James, same helical gears, um, same design on that. You know, we just made a few small changes is all. Uh, nitride coating or even steel units. Um, no, but you know what? I'm always open to, to look into other options. That, that's something that we can see about adding on as an option for some of you guys that want to keep the steel, but maybe live in those, those climates that uh, corrode a lot, for sure. All right. Well, yes. See you guys in Tennessee and uh, hope to hope to meet more of you guys out there as well. Um, talk to you soon. Have a good evening.